Hey guys, it's come for MC here again. Welcome to our 10th edition of LBP Tutorials. Hope you guys have been learning things over the episodes, and I hope that you're seeing some nice potential for uses in your own levels. Um, so last time we talked about level linking and being able to loop between levels. Today we're going to talk about the very basic idea of being able to transfer data between levels. And for that I just mean like you could turn on a light in one level and then when you go to the next level that light is still on. And so I'm going to simulate a situation very similar to that and I have set up five lights. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow data to be transferred between this level so when you link to it the same lights that you have turned on or off will still be on or off. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so when you grab these red pads the light toggles on and off. So I'm just going to set up some simple logic for the light and also some other stuff that I'll talk about in a minute. Okay, now I could use a toggle, but a toggle is not actually the best way to do this in depend er, from where we're going to extend this to. I'm going to use a selector in place of a toggle, and you can in fact do that, and I'll show you that, how that works. So I'll just use a grab switch because I want it to trigger on grab switch, and I just wire right into this selector cycle input. So what that does is it, if I unpause, Oop, and I gotta wire up the light first. So if I unpause here and I wire up the selector to the light, every time I grab here it's gonna cycle through that selector's inputs. And in this case, since there are only two, it will behave exactly like a toggle. Okay? Now, what I, the reason I use a selector is if you notice that there's these other nodes on the left hand side. These are what I call override nodes. So if I wire oh, if I wire something to that, it will override the current state of that the selector is at. So it allows you to have more control over what state your toggle is at. And it's pretty useful. And I almost never use a base toggle because I can get the same results and even more out of a selector. Okay. So what I'm going to do to be able to uh, communicate between levels is I'm going to use the player score. So I have placed down a score sensor here. And the score sensor will allow me to give a certain number of points to players and I'm going to use the different values that I could give to players as a way to communicate between the levels. Okay? Or as a as a way to decide which lights are on. So I just checked there to make sure I had the same settings as what I had already made. I set this up to give score to just you. Um, I don't know if it really matters because it does a uh, cumulative score that it uses for this. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so when the light is on and you leave the level, then it's going to give these 10 points for this light. Okay, So I'm going to need to set up an AND gate for the, those conditions. And I only want it to do it once, because if you notice, I can do some score harvesting if I l allow it to give score every time you grab it. Someone could just co constantly grab it over and over and over again and just harvest the score. And we want creator, or we want creator control over the score in order for this to work properly. So the conditions for giving a score is you've triggered the level link, which I have set up through that um, player sensor, and that the light is on. You'll notice that the second selector output corresponds to the light being on. And I'll just show you, this is just wired up exactly as in the level linking video. It's just a player sensor. And if I pick it up, you'll see that it's wired to our level link. Okay. And then this level is linking to data transfer to. I have set up two levels here, data transfer and data transfer to. So you can go back and forth between the two levels. Okay. So if you trigger that level link and the light is on, this one will give 10 points. So there, I've turned the light on. And I hit the link, and you'll see that it gives me 10 points off to the side there. Okay. So I'll just reset that because I don't want that to be on. I want it to be fresh for when I actually use it in the level. And then I'll reset my selector input back to 1 so that light is back off. Okay. So that's the basic idea of being able to give a score to a player depending on where the lights are. And then I couldn't remember exactly how I set this up. So what I was doing is I was checking all of my, my score givers here to see what their values were. So that one was at 10. This one and I check it's also at 10 because what I had done is I had copied that original microchip uh, five times and so it override the settings that I had and I th I've ended up confusing myself here but I figured it out and I just opened up all five of them and I'll show you the the values that we have to put in for this to work properly 
So the first one is at 10, like I said. This one, I'm going to set to 20. So I double it, and then I double it again. So this one's going to be at 40. Double again for 80. And again, I use the left stick here to do 10, uh, 10 point increments. And then the last one is at 180. Or excuse me, 160, right? Because double of 80 is 160. Okay, I'm going to stop the video here for a second and I'm going to show you explain why these numbers have to be set up this way. Okay, so here's just a brief explanation of why we have to set up our point values in the way that we did. So if you look, I chose 10, 20, 40, 80, and 160 for each of our lights in our data transfer example here. These are our bits of data that we're transferring between the levels. If you look, lights 1 and 2, when you add them together, make only 30 points. So if you have, a, if you have 40 points, exactly 40 points, the only explanation is that light 3 was used. It's not the previous two lights because that's not enough points. Thus, we can use a similar idea, we can extend this idea, to say that we can decode any given point value. So if you look, 130 points, the only way you could have possibly gotten 130 points was from using lights 1, 3, and 4. You can try any other combinations, but it's not going to work because of the way we set it up. It's a very interesting property of mathematics that I don't have time to get into here. If you're willing to take it on faith, you can go ahead and do that. Okay, we're back, guys. I have collapsed those microchips down just so because we're done using them um, for now. And I'm going to set up what will be our decoding logic. So we're able to give players a score, but we need some way to interpret the score that we give to them. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a sequencer because what we have to do is we have to decode in order from largest to smallest just by virtue of how it works. Because we give 160 points to the fifth one, it wouldn't make sense to check if we have 10 points because the 160 will trump the 10 points. So what we have to do is we have to check in order, do I have at least 160 points? If yes, turn the light on. And then take away 160 points and then say, do I now have 80 points? And we repeat this process all the way through. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on this sequencer, set up five score sensors, one for each of the five lights. Okay. And then I'm going to trigger, set these up to be 10, 20, 40, 80, and 160. And like I said, we have to make sure we do it from highest to, lo highest to lowest. So I had these backwards, so I've just got to quickly move them to the other side. Okay, so again, we check 160, then 80, then 40, then 20, then 10. Okay. So we have to make sure we do check them in that order, or else this doesn't work at all. Um, you're going to get really backwards, confusing results. Okay, And then we're going to use a score giver. So we're going to use a score giver to subtract that number of points, assuming that it matches up. So I'm going to set this one to 10. So if there are 10 points, I need to subtract 10 points to say that I have accounted for those 10 points. And then I repeat that for the 20, the negative 20, the negative 40, negative 80, and negative 160. So just a little bit about what's going to, let's say, let's say I turned on the first and the second light. That would give me 10 points and 20 points for a total of 30 points. Now when I come into the level and run the check, nothing's going to happen for 160, 80, or 40. But when I get to the 20, it's going to say, yep, there are at least 20 points here. And it's going to trigger that and then take away 20, leaving me with 10. Okay, So that's just a simple example of, and then, and then it will trigger that 10 when it checks for the 10 as well. So just a really simple example. So first I wire up the 160 to the minus 160, and then to this fifth light. I just wire up to the selector input there, which will be my override. Remember that that fifth light corresponds to 160 points. So it will only turn on if I have at least 160 points per how our system works. And then for 80, I wire it up to the negative 80 score giver and wire it up to our fourth light here because that one corresponds to 80 points. And then we repeat the process for 40. And because I've wired this up once before, I have a nice little node that I can just wire on the outside of the circuit chip or circuit board. And then I do the same thing for the 20, negative 20, 
and wire it right up to the second light, which we again remember corresponds to having 20 points. And then we've only got one more to go here for our 10, negative 10, and that first light. Okay, so we have our decoding system set up. We just need a way to set our sequencer in motion. And I, I do like to create a little short delay in here uh, for when our sequencer starts to let the level load and everything. And to if there's more than one player, allow all the players to load. So I just put a short little delay in here. And I trigger this to start counting up when the players all get in. So I'll just use a player sensor and then wire that up to my or wire this player sensor up to my timer so there's a slight delay before it starts the the sequencer and starts the decoding check on all the points okay so start count up and then wire into our sequencer so it's just gonna run through the sequencer one time and I need to make sure that it's checking fairly quickly I bump it all the way down to point two you might be able to get point one I don't know point two is what worked for me and that went sufficiently quick um, but yeah, this, the system is basically finished. So when I drop into the level, let's say I turned on a couple of lights, it will, or let's say I had turned on lights and I had linked into this level. The check is gonna run, and I'm simulating that here, and it'll run through each of those checks. Now because I don't have any points, because I'm in create mode obviously, it's not activating any of these. But if I had, say, 80 points, when that vertical line in the sequencer hit, it would trigger the negative 80, and it would trigger the fourth light over here. So it would recognize, okay, he turned on the fourth light, so I must turn on the fourth light in order for this data transfer to have any point. Okay? So that's the basic system. I mean, this is a really simple, straightforward way of doing it where we just have five lights. I'm going to show you what it looks like in motion. So I'm going to go to the levels that I have linked up and show you that it does, in fact, transfer the data as it should. Okay, so I'll just go to my earth and load up the data transfer level. I have two levels set up, data transfer one and two, and I've made these copyable so you can check them out once you're done watching the video. So here I go into the level. I have no points yet, so not all the lights are off, and I can just turn on a random selection of lights. So I'll do the one, the first, third, and fifth, and I'll get 210 points for that. So now when I come into this level, you can see the check running, and I had three point values subtracted to correspond with the three lights there. My score is back down to zero. So I've purposely set this up so you can't manipulate these lights. So I'll show you that we can, we can bring the data from when we enter the level and again to when we leave the level. So there I get 210 points again. And then when I come in, it'll run the check and it'll say, yep, those three lights are still on. Okay. So I can show you that we can change this at any time. So we can change the variables that we have. And so now I'm doing the second, fourth, and fifth lights, which is a different point value, 260 points. So now when I come in here, it runs a check. It'll say, yep, 260 points. That, sh that must match up with the second, fourth, and fifth lights. So it works. So I hope you guys are seeing some nice potential that we can have for how we can use data transfer between the levels. It doesn't, however, and you'll see I'm frowning, it doesn't, however, work exactly like this when you have two or more players in the level. If you have two players, you have to double the amount of points that you're taking away. Because for whatever reason, it distributes the points that you're taking away among the number of players. So if you have three players, you have to triple the amount of points you take away. Four players, you have to quadruple the number, the number of points you take away. Now, I have set it up so it'll work with all those number of players in this level. So if you copy it, you can see what I'm doing. Basically, I'm just switching circuit boards on and off depending on how, no, how many players there are in the level. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I hope you guys are learning something. There are limits to this in that we only have a million points, but it's still really cool. Take care, guys. See you later.